I have a confession. I'm a map person. I think in maps. Sometimes I dream in maps. Did you know there's many different ways to project a map? So I want to talk about how maps may affect our perception of the world. Let me start with a story. I was listening to a news broadcast about climate change and how it affects the Sahel. You know what I thought of first? The map of Africa, which I keep in my head. And then next, I started to think about the people. So the Sahel ecoclimate is just below the Sahara Desert. And, th and this is what I think about first. After I get myself in that region, I think about, yeah, the, the herders and uh, traders who live in this area. But that comes after the map. There's something satisfying about placing events on my mental map. I know many people don't feel this way, but still, I think most of us carry some form of image of the way the countries in the world are organized. How about your mental map? Now, I think this one is very cute. It's by a little elementary girl. But I feel like I have met some adults whose view is not so unlike this. Uh, my favorite thing is probably that Japan is next to the Tigris and Euphrates River. Very nice. Most American school children's maps are something like this. We have the United States on the left and Eurasia and Africa on the right. Atlantic Ocean is sort of the dividing area. One side effect of this map is that we believe Greenland is huge. I'm going to talk about size perception in a little bit. Uh, to compare, here is a Japanese school child's uh, map of the world, which uh, usually has Japan somewhere in the middle. And the Pacific Ocean is the divider between the two major continental areas. But what else does this do to our perception? Because there's a problem with a map. How do you represent a sphere on a flat surface? There must be some compromise made when you're peeling basically the surface of the earth and turning it into something flat. Uh, so this is where cartography comes in. It's the study and practice of making a map. They need physical science, of course, to measure and calculate distance, area, and so on. Uh, it also requires a lot of social science. That's, for example, when a Japanese cartographer maybe wants to put Japan in the middle, or a Western cartographer tends to put Europe in the middle. But map making is also very artistic. Uh, you might be able to see something like this, which is an accurate representation of London, but it's also beautiful. To me, anyway, it's very beautiful. However, projection affects perception of size because when you put it on a flat map, something must be compromised. So this is the US school child's map. It was actually designed in the 1500s by a man from uh, Flanders, which is this Belgian area. Well, so he put Europe in the middle. Not a surprise, really, but one side effect. This map was designed for sailing. At the time, there were many European voyages to Asia and to the Americas and around South America and so on. So this map was very useful for understanding the shape and navigation of the ocean. But there are major uh, compromises in the size of the land. Let's look at a couple cases. We'll compare Scandinavia to India. Let's put Scandinavia over here for the relative size. And Scandinavia for us means Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. 
And then let's move India over. Now, uh, for our map, actually, th these two areas are the same. Both of these rectangles are actually the same area. So a school child or adult may think Scandinavia and India are about the same size. Now, what if we actually put India at real size compared to Scandinavia? You see here, with this map, the northern area, as you get closer to the pole, is stretched. This line of latitude has a larger gap than the lines of latitude closer to the equator. As you get more and more towards the pole, these latitude lines are farther and further apart. If India were shown at true size, how big would it be next to Scandinavia? India is actually three and a half times larger than Scandinavia. It should look something like this. So you might not be surprised if people don't understand the real size. Uh, um, same with any other country in the middle here. Uh, so we're talking about uh, South America, Africa, and even Australia, certainly Indonesia. Indonesia is a huge country, but you wouldn't know that based on this map. With equal area projection, uh, the land near the equator is better represented. So now, suddenly, <laughs> You might think this map is really incorrect. I think most of us don't see a map like this. But actually, Africa is this big. This is an equal distant, uh, sorry, equal area map, but not equidistant. Africa and South America are not actually this close to each other, but area of the land is, is accurate, and the shape is distorted. So people don't tend to like this shape. And now we can see that actual size of India and, and uh, Scandinavia. Well, what happens when we turn it upside down? Maybe this would be nice for Australia or South America. Argentina is probably comfortable with this view. And this is accurate. There's nothing wrong with doing this. North and South is arbitrary. But since 13% of the world live in the South, probably not likely to change much. Well, now that we have nice technology, we can see all sorts of different maps. For example, a cartogram. A cartogram is a new way to see the world. The, in this case, the size is determined by population. Brazil, interestingly, looks about normal, doesn't it? So that means Brazil's population to land area, or population density, is probably somewhat around the world average, where certainly India's and China's are not. Let's, final, let's end with a cartogram that's uh, thankful to Japan, that looks good for Japan. Ooh, look how big Japan is! Yes, Japan is a global leader in patents. And uh, this is purely on number of patents awarded. I believe Japan is actually larger than the U.S. for one time. <laughs> Unfortunately, this kind of map also shows need for progress in areas like South America, Africa, and South Asia. Well, what's your perspective? Which map are you comfortable with? Do you feel like changing that map of the world that you have on your wall? I hope I've given you a new perspective.